So you may have noticed by now that Joyce likes to establish rules so that he can break them later. And here we have yet another example of that. Nine of the ten thunder words in Finnegan's Wake are set off from their surrounding texts by one or more of what I like to call the three P's, either parentheses, punctuation, or paragraph breaks. Well, we simply must not let this rule go unbroken, so here we are with thunder word number eight, which is located on page 332. And it takes place not just in the middle of a paragraph, but right in the middle of a sentence as part of a prepositional phrase. And here it is. For Hannigan with Hunnigan still haunt a hunt to fin their Hinnigan, where pa 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 ra san wa ra ki a lak na tulak mungan mak 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 wak fall their deblin on the Dublin daddy doodle dan dan ruly person creaked a jest. And yes, I did say that entire sentence, thunderword included, in a single breath, it can be done. A little bit hard, but sure, it can be done. So, for the sake of staying on topic, we'll leave off further review of the actual sentence in which this word appears with its references to the Han dynasty and its war with the Huns and zero in on just the thunder word itself. And here it is again. Pa 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 ra sanua rahi alach na tolach mongan mak 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 wak fall their deblin on the Dublin daddy doodled. So, just like thunder word number seven, we have a simple declarative sentence embedded into our word. In this case, the subject is expressed in the first two syllables, papa, and the verb in the final two, doodled, thus making the sentence papa doodled and a bunch of modifiers in the middle, mostly for the noun phrase. Um, Plus, thunder word number eight is by far the most Irish of the thunder words. It does have a good bit of English in it. In fact, all three of the root words, if you will, for father are there, papa, father, and daddy. Uh, But from there, we start getting pretty darn Irish. And the best place to start, I think, here is with whack, fall, their devil. Now, in addition to having things like whack and fall and there and maybe devil, all of those are perfectly good English words, this is primarily a distortion of whackful the diddle. Or, as Ronnie Drew of the legendary Irish folk music band The Dubliners would have it, Whackful the diddle for the night all day. Thank you, Ronnie. Now, Whackful the Diddle, as you probably have surmised, is kind of the Irish folk music version of Shooby Dooby Doo, or Yippee Kaye, or Heidi 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 Hi, or A Wap Babaloo Bop Malop Bam Boom. It's basically a lyric filler. Uh, and as long as I've got Ronnie Drew's picture up here, I should mention that the band he and Luke Kelly formed, the Dubliners, took their band name from the title of Joyce's amazing short story collection. Dubliners, um, and they recorded what are, in my opinion, the best versions of many of the songs most commonly referenced in Finnegan's Wake, including The Rocky Road to Dublin, Phil the Fluter's Ball, Master McGraw, and Tim Finnegan's Wake itself, in fact. And speaking of the Dubliners, Joyce's very own hometown is embedded in our word there near the end with Dublin. Whack for the diddle for the night all day. And with that, it is now time to get ridiculously Irish. This entire highlighted section is taken from the Gaelic. Paras an uarakilach na tolach mangan, which, if you look it up in McHugh or Slepon, you'll see that it's a variant of this. Now, you may have noticed that from time to time I'll give a foreign word and then say something like, not quite sure how to pronounce that, kind of under my breath. Well, allow me to say this loud and clear here. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. And that is not for want of investigation. I just happen to be from the American Southwest, and the Irish language is very tricky for non-natives. This phrase basically translates to Pers O'Reilly of Tully Mongan. Now, Pers O'Reilly is, of course, the character from the song on page 44, where we were looking at Thunderword number 3, and Tully Mongan is a castle up in County Cavan near, northern, near the northern Irish border. Now, that's all easy enough. But the pronunciation of this thunderword fragment is another matter entirely. Let me give you some other examples of the dilemma here. Um, If you happen to be in the Dublin area and you see a sign on the road that says this, and you ask a Dublin native how that's pronounced, they'll say Ballyclee. 
This is pronounced Dun Leary, and this is pronounced Finn McCool. I kid you not. Now, you can ask, you know, somebody who happens to have some Gaelic on them, what about all of those, you know, consonants that have an H coming after them? Well, the answer then comes back, no, I'm pronouncing them. So that's right. That A-T-H-A there in the middle of Ballyclee is being pronounced by the Gaelic tongue. It's just very subtle. In the Gaelic, consonants followed by an H are what are called aspirated consonants, and it's hard to achieve hyperbole when describing how subtle they actually are. From personal experience, I would say they're about as subtle to a non-native ear as a dog whistle is to a human ear. It could very well be that this really is pronounced Perso Riley of Tullymongan. So, while I'm trying my best to account for that when I pronounce parasanu arachilak natulak mangan, I'm not particularly inclined to allow these delicious syllables to just blend into breathy diphthongs. I would run the risk, after all, of making them disappear altogether with my non-native tongue, and then our thunder word would lose its polysyllabic impact. So, my point in all of this is to say that I have shamelessly created my own set of rules on how to pronounce thunder word number eight, based on my own personal desire for the word to have as many syllables as possible. Now, this can certainly be debated, but for now, my recommendation for you at home is to start by learning the word as I have done. And if you can justify your own variations, please do start exploring them. So with that, let's drill it, shall we? Here we go. Pa, 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 ras. So that's four pa's, right? Pa, 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 ras. Anua rakilach. Natulach mangan. Mac, mac, mac. That's the easy part. Whack fall their devil. Non the Dublin. Daddy doodled. And now we'll string them together. Ready? Pa 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 ra sanua rachialach. Na tulach mangan mak 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 wak fall their devil. Non the Dublin daddy doodled. And so there it is. Thunder word number eight. Pa 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 ra sanua rachialach na tulach mangan mak 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 wak fall their devil non the Dublin daddy doodled. Just about as Irish as the clover itself. So we say a hip hooray. Come and listen while we pray. Wak for the devil for the die all day. Yippee-ki-yay.